This is Eyewitness News with Roseanne Scamardella, Ernie Anastas, plus Warner Wolf, Spencer Christian, and the Eyewitness News team. Tonight, once again, we get ready for more wet and more wind as Frederick heads in our direction. It could be a replay of what Tropical Storm David did to us a week ago. Tonight, the Gulf Coast is trying to recover. Hurricane Frederick ripped through that area, killing and destroying. <laughs> The half million people evacuated from Frederick's killer path are returning home tonight. Returning to houses reduced to splinters, businesses left in shambles, and streets that look like Armageddon. Now, they try to salvage pieces of their lives and livelihoods before looters beat them to it. Police say anyone caught looting will be shot on sight. The death toll stands at nine. It will probably go higher. We have no idea how many people are injured. Property damage runs into the hundreds of millions of dollars. The White House is giving Alabama, Mississippi, and Florida disaster aid. And President Carter will make a personal visit tomorrow. New York City and the metropolitan area has just caught its breath from Hurricane David, which struck last week. And already we're facing a new assault from his fearsome younger brother, that's Frederick. David's floods and devastation killed five people in our area. It flooded out thousands of homes. Nearly half a million people lost electric power, and it took the utility companies days to get them back on the line. Tonight, we are talking with uh, Victor Blanchett, who is vice president of the Orange and Rockland Utilities. Mr. Blanchett, uh, from some of the problems that you've had in the past, from this last storm, there are perhaps some weak areas in your area. Can you tell us how difficult it'll be for you to uh, fight off this next uh, anticipated storm? Well. We're ready on this one. We don't expect uh, Frederick to hit us as badly as David did, but we're taking no chances. We've surveyed our service territory by helicopter. We've identified certain spots in the Durant transmission and distribution system uh, that, and tree conditions that need attention. Uh, we have crews working on extended work days to replenish the supplies that were expended during David. We think we're ready. That some people are trying to put in for. For example, uh, food spoilage and some other damages. How do they go about getting some of these claims pushed through? We've received several hundred claims to the last information that I had. Uh, those claims, by and large, are not covered uh, unless the uh, claimant can uh, prove gross negligent, um, negligence on behalf of the utility. Uh, we don't see that in our case. Okay, thank you very much for being with us tonight. That's Victor Blanchett who is vice president of the Orange and Rockland Utilities. I want to remind you that Spencer Christian is tracking Frederick on its way up north, and we'll have a full report later on in this broadcast. Roseanne? Meanwhile, the people of the Dominican Republic are still suffering, devastated by two hurricanes. New York Good Samaritans have done plenty of collecting, trying to help, but Peter Bannon tells us they can't seem to get their relief goods down there fast enough. The Dominican Republic was devastated by the storms, both David and Frederick. 1,400 people are known dead, 340 people at least missing. And 85% of the country's crops have been destroyed. It'll take a year and a half for that to be recovered. Here at 173rd Street and St. Nicholas Avenue at the Dominican Government Association, since the storm hit, a massive civilian effort to collect food, medicine, and other supplies to send down to the Dominican Republic has been underway here night and day. This is an all-volunteer effort. People coming from their jobs to work all night to package and move these things. It's work they feel must be done and done quickly. We have an emergency need, not only in food, medicine, and money, but also uh, people to volunteer themselves and come over here and help us packing up clothes and packing up uh, food and helping to load up the truck. So far, with donated space on cargo ships, they've managed to send out 11 loads by ship. The first ships won't arrive there for a couple of days. What they need is help to get an aircraft to get stuff down there right away. We're waiting for the Dominican cargo to send in yes. a lot of medicine and food to the Dominican Republic. From Dominican Airlines? Yes. Right now, there are no planes available? because No plane, because only Dominican Airlines had three uh, commercial plane. The hope is for government assistance with the military aircraft to fly these things down and soon. So the volunteers expect that relief effort of shipping supplies and collecting supplies to continue for at least a year, sending them down to Santo Domingo. If you would like to help, you can get in touch with the folks there at 173rd and St. Nicholas at this number, area code 212-927-0660. 
927-0660. Ernie. Thank you, Peter. Still coming up tonight here on Eyewitness News, a New York City teacher is arrested for selling pornography. A travel agent skips town with what could be millions of dollars. And a new strategy for auxiliary police patrols is under fire. Tracy Egan has a live report coming up next when Eyewitness News continues. Stay with us. A New York City school teacher is behind bars tonight, charged with running a mail-order business in child pornography. FBI agents say they seized a truckload of films and photos when they raided the home of Robert Nilsson of Old Bridge, New Jersey. The photos show boys, girls, men, and animals engaged in all sorts of obscene acts. Nilsson teaches at PS55 in Staten Island and also teaches psychology at Middlesex County College. Ernie? Present conflict continues tonight between New York City police and auxiliary cops. The trouble this time centers on a plan to use civilian policemen to man idle patrol cars. Tracy Egan tonight tells us that the PBA is pretty upset about it. Tracy? I'm standing in Midtown Manhattan next to one of the 19th Precinct's idle cars. It's one of the cars which could be heading back out onto the streets with a civilian and auxiliary policeman behind the wheel on Monday. That's when the police department begins its 90-day experiment with idle cars and auxiliary policemen. It's a program and experiment the Patrolmen's Benevolent Association says could hurt their drive to increase hiring, but which auxiliary policemen say could deter crime. The city's 4,100 auxiliary policemen, APs, patrol assigned neighborhoods on foot. They usually take their own cars to assignments, but the police department gave permission for two cars to carry APs tonight so that we could take pictures. According to the AP's commanding officer, use of the vehicles will follow strict guidelines. Will the radio cars be going out looking for emergencies? No. They will be covering the territory which that supervisor is assigned to so he can, I say, train, supervise, instruct the auxiliaries under him. Auxiliary police will have access to police cars only when the vehicles are not in use. APs will not respond to radio calls unless specifically ordered to do so, and APs will not chase vehicles. President Sam D'Amelio of the Patrolmen's Benevolent Association says manning of idle police cars with volunteers is an admission that the city needs more police, but that it will not make the city any safer. Somebody's going to believe that that's a policeman there and believe that they're going to be protected, and they're not. Somebody's going to mug them, somebody's going to rob them in front of them, and they can't take any action. The auxiliary police respond by saying that any kind of uniform presence on the street will deter crime. Now, neither the auxiliary police nor the police department are saying exactly how many cars will be back on the streets after Monday, but uh, they should have a better idea in the weeks ahead. The debate on the merits of this experiment, of course, will probably not even come to a head until the three-month experiment is over. Tracy Egan, Channel 7 Eyewitness News, live on Fifth Avenue. Back to you, Ernie. Thanks, Tracy, for that report. And tonight, an international search is on for a Brooklyn travel agent who reportedly stole between one and three million dollars in tickets from three major airlines. Authorities say the ripoff scheme went on for about 10 months before 29-year-old Ham Einhorn used a one-way ticket himself to jet himself out of the country last February. Police think Einhorn may be in Israel or in Switzerland tonight. And Bronx police tonight are trying to solve the mystery of the death of a 30-year-old Bronx woman. The unidentified woman was found lying in the courtyard of 90 West 164th Street in the Bronx. Detectives don't know if the woman fell or was pushed. An investigation is now underway. A proud but sad police honor guard paid final tribute at the funeral of Officer Edward Fogel today. He died Sunday in a shootout on the Harlem River Drive. Mayor Koch and Police Commissioner McGuire were among the mourners. Vogel and his partner had stopped the car of a convicted murderer when the shooting happened. More than 3,000 police officers attended the funeral in New City.
Medical researchers tonight say a little aspirin every day could help prevent a heart attack. The findings show that a daily dose of half an aspirin tablet will help stop blood clots, which could contribute to a heart attack. Aspirin, by the way, is the most widely used medicine in the world. Roseanne? This is a story of adventure, midlife change, from showbiz glamour to, well, you'll see. Here's Joel <laughs> Siegel with Peter Dean. Joel? Roseanne, for the past 30, 40 years, Peter Dean has been a genuine behind-the-scenes showbiz biggie. He's managed, oh, from Paul Whiteman to Peggy Lee, but no more. A few years ago, in his mid-60s, he gave it all up for this. I'm a ding-dong daddy from Dublin. I'm a secret to my stuff. I'm a clean, good fellow from Honest Corner. I'll see me strut. That's Peter Dean in the ice cream suit, plucking his ukulele and singing that frantic, funny jazz from the 30s and 40s. And yes, he made it big backstage as a manager and as a producer of jingles and singing commercials from J-E-L-L-O to Winston Tastes Good. He did well, quite well. But today at 68, he said goodbye to all of that for an open-ended stint here at Mickey's in Midtown Manhattan and for a series of albums, too, with nieces Lucy and Carly Simon. So what are you doing up here? What, what are you doing this for? <laughs> well, Joe, basically I'm having some fun. Uh, there comes a time in your life when you have to do what you want to do. When you just have to strike out and say, for your own sanity and for your own, uh, well, I'm a therapy, you might even say. Uh, Could you make a living doing this? Yes, it's conceivable. Not a big living, but uh, the main thing is now that I don't have any ulcers. <laughs> <laughs> But your boy's got me starting. I can't quit. How am I doing? Hey, hey, hey. Tweet, tweet, twat, 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 Peter Dean is at Mickey's, a new club, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday nights with two great guitarists and a lovely singer, Gene Churchill. And anyone who doesn't at least smile when he sings is just an out and out meanie. Ernie. You're telling me? Hey, Warner, why don't you sing a few bars and take me out to the ball game? <laughs> da, 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 da. All right, Ernie in Fenway tonight. The Yankees beat the Red Sox 10 to 3. Guidry won his 11th straight on a nine hitter. Let's go to the videotape. Pick it up right here in the top of the fourth. The Yanks led 3 to 2. Bobby Mercer, the batter. And Mercer says, Give me that short left field wall. He's got it. High off the wall. Chris Chambliss scores, and the Yankees lead 4 to 2. Then Randolph. Base hit in the right field. Here's Dwight Evans. Whoops, now nah, that away, Dwight. Dent scores, Mercer scores. Six to two, Yankees. Now watch this. Last of the fourth, trailing seven to two. Base hit left field. Here comes Dwyer around third. Gamble's throw, and he is out nine times. Lucien says, any dummy who tries to score down by five deserves to be out. Meanwhile, in Toronto, the Orioles beat the Blue Jays 10 to 4. Mike Flanagan won his 22nd. He will win the American League Cy Young Award. Any combination of four Oriole wins and or four Yankee losses, the Yanks are officially eliminated. Even though if the Yanks were in the Western Division, they would now be in undisputed possession of first place. At Shea, only 3,900 showed up. Phillies beat the Mets 2 to 1 on a disputed play to end the game. By the way, the three-game series at Shea on three clear nights drew a total of only 12,700 fans. Let's go to the videotape. Here was the play. Bottom of the ninth, Phillies led 2-1. Mets bases loaded, one out. Flynn is the batter. Flynn, fly ball to medium center field, and that's Greg Gross, who doesn't have a strong arm, but he has an accurate arm. The throw to the plate. Here comes Youngblood. Now watch. Youngblood crashes into Bob Boone. Watch Boone's right hand. He goes down. Drops the ball. The ball is free. You see that? He cradles the ball. The run should have counted. Umpire Terry Tata says out. Instead of safe, Torrey says, Terry, you missed the call. And he sure did. Give us a break. In Montreal, the Expos made it 16 out of 17. Beat the Cubs 4-3. Let's go to the videotape. Here it is. It's 3-2 Cubs. Bottom of the ninth, two outs. The Expos have the bases loaded. Rusty Staub, pinch hitting. Staub, ground ball to first pace. Hits the seam in the rug over Bittner's head. A Valentine scores right behind him. The run scores, and the Expos win it 4-3. to three. The Pirates were rained out, so the Pirates and Expos are tied for first, although the Expos lead by percentage points. 
Reds and Astros not scheduled. Reds lead by a game and a half. How about the White Sox game last night? All right, let's go to the videotape. White Sox led 11 to 5, last of the sixth. Mike Barlow pitching to Allen Bannister. Watch this. The pitch, boom, it hits him. You see it? We get in late, did you see it? Huh? You didn't see it? You want to roll? I mean, the whole thing is, you want to see it? All right. Well, you said use the imagination. Look at this. Here's the uh, manager, Tony LaRusso, says, give us a break. He says, I'll give you a break. I'll throw you out. Pretty big trade in the NBA tonight. On paper, you got to say why. The Lakers trade Adrian Dantley to the New Orleans Jazz for Spencer Haywood. Oh. Hey, Dantley's only 23. The guy averages 20 points in his career, 20 points a game. Haywood, all right. Great at times, but he'll be 31 by the end of the season. I don't follow that. And finally, let's go. Oh, it didn't take long. Garrow, your premium, signed by the New Orleans Saints. Finally, every ball player has his own unique way of touching home plate. With that in mind, watch these three. First, Pete Rose. Rose, are you safe? He's got it, Pete. Matt Alexander, tiptoe backwards. And then, George, watch it, George. Oops, that's it. George, are you safe? He's safe. This is Warner Wolf. Rose? Thanks, Warner. Well, Richard Nixon admits he did a lousy job dealing with Watergate. In a new introduction to an old book, the former president writes, history will justifiably record his handling of Watergate as an unmitigated disaster. Nixon's not running, but at least a dozen would-be presidents are after the Florida vote. These do not include Calvin Coolidge, a surprise to some. You see an advertising whiz out to prove a point, pasted Coolidge for president posters on some Florida buses. You guessed it, some voters called in to find out if the old guy was running again. Cheryl Teagues doesn't need to be president. She makes a whole lot more as a model. Tonight, CoverGirl threw a party to celebrate her new five-year contract. It's called the biggest cosmetic contract ever. Ernie? It's a pretty big turnout for the Guess Who in concert, and we'll also check with Spencer Christian as Eyewitness News continues in just a moment. Stay with us tonight. In California, or here, it seems you can't win for trying. Pacific Telephone changed the phone numbers for hundreds of customers. The idea to improve service, one problem, the company never told the people their numbers were changing. Nobody could call home or anybody else. The company says employees are working overtime to straighten things out. Ernie? Well, Spencer and I got the blue suit memo today. It looks That's very right. nice. Yeah, right. yeah, it looks good. I like yours. Thank you very much. Why don't we switch? <laughs> well, not right here on camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> Warner, tell me how the weather will look. Uh, pretty good for the next no. few days? No, I'm afraid not. Ooh. No, I'm afraid well, not. Want me to tell you about yeah, it? Yeah, would you please? Okay. Well, we had a nice day today, as you may know by now. Mostly sunny skies. High temperature got up to 79 degrees. Right now, it's cloudy. Rain is threatening to move into the region. Temperature Ooh. in Manhattan, 67. Relative humidity, 76%. Barometer reading stands at 30.13. That's falling off a bit. Winds are coming out of the southeast at 12 miles per hour, and it's getting cool and cloudy and humid around the viewing area. On the national map, what once was a very intense hurricane, Frederick, is now just a low-pressure system. Uh, it is producing a lot of heavy rainfall here in the, uh, well, Tennessee Valley area, moving up from southern Tennessee into Kentucky and the Appalachians. It's threatening to dump some rather heavy rainfall in that region, but the worst is over. The heavy winds and the high, the high winds and the heavy rain, that's it, that hit the Gulf Coast last night are all over. Now we have some rather moderate rainfall and light winds around 20, 25 miles per hour moving towards the northeast, and that's going to bring us rain for tomorrow and most of Saturday, maybe a little bit of Sunday too. You really want to know all the details? Stick around for a minute. I'll tell you when we come back with a five-day forecast. <laughs> All right, tonight we're going, well, this is a satellite picture, by the way, showing you the massive clouds in the area of precipitation left over from uh, what was Hurricane Frederick. It's now just a low-pressure system, and it is not a serious storm. So, for tonight, for our region, we're calling for cloudy skies. Low temperature tonight between 60 and 65. Tomorrow, we're going to have some rain, and there'll be a few thunderstorms. Ooh. High between 75 and 80, winds getting up around 25 miles per hour. More rain tomorrow night, yeah. low between 58 and 63, but we don't expect any flooding or any severe weather. The next three days look not so good. On uh, Saturday, a little bit of leftover rain and some partial clearing. Sunday looks a little better. Next week, we get a preview of autumn. Yeah. Roseanne? Thanks, Spencer. Guess who's at the garden tonight? Who? The who, that's who. who? The group will who? be there for the next who? five nights. <laughs> This is 
The Who's first public appearance since their drummer, Keith Moon, died last year. Moon is replaced by a drummer who used to play with the faces, Kenny Jones. Peter Bannon will have a special two-part report on The Who next week. We'll be back tomorrow. I'm Roseanne Scamardella. Hope you tomorrow is just as nice as you want it to be. Ernie? That's our news for now. For all of us here at Eyewitness News, I'm Ernie Ganastas. Have a good night, and we'll see you again tomorrow night at 11 o'clock. Italian word for fresher eyes, but it's 50 years of piety and, uh, well, mangeria because, well, there's a lot of eating here, too. A lot of eating. Pizza. Does it ever fall on your head? No, not mine. People say yes. yes. <laughs> Wait, That's really not a hat. <laughs> Are you going to wear the hat? Yes, I certainly am. I'm Italian and very proud of it. And I plan to wear this hat for a long time. I don't, honey. What is that? This is called souping glaze. English soup, right? English soup <laughs> with this, rum in it. And this is cannoli, of course. What's in cannoli it? Cannoli, and it's got the cheese in there. Mm. And it's been spiced mm. and sugar. Delicious. Are you Neapolitan? Yes, we are. Oh. We're Neapolitan. Vidi Napoli e Pomori. Vidi Napoli Pomori. You don't need to go to Naples and die. You can come right here to Mulberry Street. We wouldn't die, nice. though. How do you like it? Delizioso. Delizioso. Mm. Well, Don't see Alan, New Center 4. Looks like a good time. That's our news for this evening. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Chuck Scarborough. Have a nice night. See you tomorrow. <laughs>